Okay. So another part, uh, another thing that I've received some some comments are about errors, right? That you're not able to get your file to error or to, to render because you're getting errors. Let me let me quickly clear these completed jobs, uh, and let's let's use this example, the separate um, AOV, uh, as an example. So right now it should render just fine. I'm going to go ahead and set this to one tenth, so it kind of goes through real quick. And let's see if we can make this error. I am guessing from the people that I've talked to or that I've gotten emails from that you have it set like this. Okay, so you have this extra image that's trying to write out and you're telling it to write to a different file. So let's see if this errors. Okay, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to go ahead and say render to disk. So this starts, we see, and we're going to sit here and see how long it takes for this to kick out something. All right, so it took 21 seconds, uh, and it says that it was done. So I am going to, where's my other one? We're up, and we're going to go into here, separate AOVs. Um, if the error that you get, normally it throws an error in here, and that if we would look, we would click on this, and it would give us a, a problem. Um, so we come into our folder. So our separate AOV render version six, uh, these were all kind of already in there. So we see that it rendered this file. Um, but this is where it should have gone. 1247, yeah, so you see it didn't write anything separate. Um, it's 128 here. This did render, but we didn't get our extra AOVs. If that's the error that you're getting, that's a little difficult. If you're getting an actual, let's talk about errors inside of Houdini, okay? So one of the things that often happens and in Maya, it'll you get errors and sometimes you might get something printed if you look down at the very bottom here, I'm showing you there's this little, Maya has the same thing like a command line that says, hey, you've got some errors. And Houdini will spit stuff to this when there's large software-based errors, okay? But most often what happens is we'll get an error on something because we're doing something incorrect um, and I'm trying to see if I can uh, create something that will error for us. Uh, nope, look at that. <laughs> uh, I, here, I can tell you. So let me do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo that. Uh, Control Z. Let's get my stuff all back. Control Z. There we go. So those are back. Okay. So uh, one tenth. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Okay, so there's nothing in our camera. I know this errors. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit render to disk. Boom. Okay, this, when this happens inside of Houdini, Houdini is very good at telling you where exactly the problem happens. Okay, so in this case, we see this little icon pops up next to this node. Um, and this will happen as you build chains of things and you're modifying geometry. If you do something that Houdini does not like, it will give you this error. The cool thing about this is we can just mouse over and we can click the node info. And here's the error. Unable to initialize rendering module with given camera. Oh, oh, cool. I know exactly what that is. I know that I need to tell it what camera to use. And I know to do that, I need to go to this camera selection inside of here. And so either I can type it right slash obj slash cam one right and you see how it's autocomplete i can press the down key to highlight it and hit enter to autofill get rid of that backslash done right so there i got my camera or i could have gone here and selected it this way and hit accept okay and so there you go so now if i hit render to disk this will go ahead and render without issue we see there it did right it's, it's cooking no issue Okay, so being that I don't have the exact error for several of the emails that I've gotten, what is the best thing to do, and this is a, something, a very good skill to have, is in the industry, lots of people will kind of go like this. They'll, they'll hit render and it doesn't work, and they go, I don't know, it didn't render. I don't know, lead, it just didn't render. And they'll quickly throw um, the file or the problem as they say, over the fence to somebody else, being the lead or the supervisor, who will now have to dig into their file and problem solve it for them. One of the things that made 
that gave me a lot of success in early in my career was I just did not ever want to look like I didn't know what I was talking about. And so when something would break, when something would error and something wasn't working, I would look for every log file, out file, error code, everything that I could and I would dig, dig, dig until I had the solution or at least the direction of the solution for the person above me that I needed to get help from. So that way I didn't just say, hey, I hit render and it didn't work. I could come in and say, you know, I hit render, but when I select this node and I look at the info on that node, it gives me this error and I'm not sure how to solve it. And then the leader supervisor says, oh, I know how to solve that, you do this. Instead of them having to say, okay, well, give me your file, let me look into it, let me try to get back to you. The more information when you're dealing with errors, the more detective work that you do, it makes your, uh, the person who you work for, their job will become better and easier and they will love you for it. And they will always want you on their team because you make their job easier. At every level of this industry, right, because we are a service providing industry, our job is to make the person who we report to, it's our job to make their lives easier, to make them look good. If you always make the person above you look good, they will make sure that you are always on, your sh on their shows and you will always have a job. So that's really the key to this, right, is being employed. So as you go through these problems and you get errors, right, so let's see if I can create another error. Uh, I, you know, I know I can, I just come in here and uh, sorry, not that one. I'll come into my groom and I'm just going to detach the guides there. Uh, and we should get an error when we go into the scene view here. I try to view it. There you go. So you see, I've gotten an error. And same thing, I come and click the info tab invalid source, hair gen orient. Error two sources have unmatched geometry. Okay, well, I don't know what that means. But I do know that I can go inside this. So I'll go in and look. Oh, Look, there's more errors. And I look, invalid source, object groom merge one end. Okay, so it's like, okay, that's not in here. Object groom merge end is where the problem is. Okay, and so we can start seeing error, invalid source from elephant groom five groom group process out skin. Oh, these are just paths. I can even click that and it takes it, me to it. I can say, oh, oh, look, this is erroring right here at the very top of the chain. Okay, not enough sources specified. Oh, well, let me go up one level. Oh, look, here's an error. Invalid source groom, not enough sources specified. And then I can just see, oh, this is required. It says required guides. There you go. And now when I come back out to the root level, you see all of a sudden it starts cooking. We saw that text down at the bottom pass. If you didn't rewind, and you'll see a bunch of things. It tells you what it's doing down here. This is where Houdini is always telling you what it's doing. And look, now my, my groom, it works, okay? That, that is the power of Houdini. It gives you so much information to allow you to be the detective to go back through your file and figure a lot of stuff out on your own, you know? And, you know, look for things like this, you know, the warnings on there, like, oh, there is a warning in here. Cannot have channels which depend on time. Okay, so something in there, it's not breaking it, but there's something that's using a time-based channel. Okay. It's those kind of things. Houdini gives you all the pertinent information that you'll need. It's very seldom that you can't solve a problem inside of Houdini. Okay, I hope this helps for those of you who are having problems getting your renders to work. If you're having more trouble, what I want you to do is I want you to look for errors, those little icons, and send me that information. That way I can try to help you. So, good luck everybody, and happy rendering.